Hey everybody, greeting from Restoration Church. Uh, in the past few weeks, my sermonettes were on the church. This leads me to ask the question, so today, what shall the church be doing? In response to this question, here are some areas that I believe today's church ought to focus on. One, obey Christ. Two, renounce sin in the church. Three, preach repentance and faith in Christ. Four, preach the paramountcy of, of Scripture. Five, proclaim the return of Christ and his kingdom. And there's some other ones too that I won't mention right now. All these start with prayer and fasting. Let's start with obey Christ, number one. He founded the church. Christ founded the church, not Peter, not a pastor, and certainly not a pope. So it's the church's duty to obey Christ. Then is, obedience goes deeper than duty. Obedience comes from the heart and is an act of worship that sets the church apart in holiness. The church isn't a club. The church isn't a cultural institution or just another community organization that, that must accept any popular fad or trend that people want to impose on it, especially if this trend is contrary to the Bible. We love God, so we obey Him, and in, in so doing, we demonstrate that the church respects the essential command from the Lord to love our neighbors, not to, not conform to the world or bend to people's will, which is what we see happening today. The Bible says in John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my commandments. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I want you to note this now. The church is not about money, so people who threaten to withhold the finances shouldn't coerce church leadership to kowtow to demands by such carnal or uh, Christians or the agents of Satan who have invaded the church. In obeying Christ, the church will, with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, renounce sin in its midst. That's number two, renouncing sin in the church. The church cannot proclaim the Bible as truth and ignore sin in the church. So confronting sin is difficult and often met by resistance denial or fierce defiance but God has laid down the law in 1 Corinthians 5 6 to 8 and that is if an individual is unrepentant the church must remove him or her from the fellowship why it is for their own good and the good of the church because the church belongs to God why? Because the best place to learn what it means to obey and follow Jesus is among his people in the church. Why should others claim to be a part of the church then tell the church to change its beliefs? Why should, why should other people who claim to be Christians tell the church or want the church to, to disobey the Bible, the God's manual? If you're Christian, to the church, to the pastor, obey God and kick those people out. That's what the Bible is saying. We ought to obey God and exclude them. When we do this, we conform to Christ by proclaiming to all, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what Jesus said. Instead of not God's will, but our will, my will to be done. Look. I mean, look at it. Look at where our own will has led us today. If the church renounces sin in its midst, then can it preach repentance and faith? Let me say that again. If the church, if the church renounces sin in its midst, then 
can eat, preach repentance and faith. That's number three, repentance and uh, faith. What's up with, 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 with improper attire behind pulpits? What's up with driving cars on stage behind pulpits? How long can gimmicks last? Preacher, cut out those gimmicks you're using to grab people's attention. Look at what the Bible says, 2 Timothy 4 verse 2. Preach the word, correct, rebuke, and encourage. Preach the word, correct, rebuke, and encourage. You know, when the Bible says preach the word, it simply means publish, openly proclaim, or communicate the truth of God's word to the world. Now, compared to using gimmicks, you know, lightning, rock and roll in the church, preaching the word is sustainable and very necessary because as the Bible warns in 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Let me say that again. The time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. So preacher, preach about hell. Preach about the cross. Preach about the crucifixion. Preach the need for repentance from sin. Look at what the Bible says again, Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And then verse 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And then verse 31 of 2 Timothy 4 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Did you hear what I just said? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, the question is, faith in what? Have faith in what? Repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, in whom or what do you have your faith anchored right now? Listen, many have and many don't know what they believe in. Many don't know what they put their faith in. Others have their faith in things, in toys. And others have their faith and belief in dead men. But Jesus Christ is not dead, he's alive. The Bible also says in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's how you repent and become a Christian. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So to be a Christian means you're committed to following Jesus and to living your life in obedience to his word, the, the Holy Bible, and living according to it. So we have said that the church must, one, obey Christ, two, renounce sin in its midst, and three, preach repentance and faith. That's what, we, that, that's what we've seen so far. Now, by God's will, next week, we will look at all this, all right? You know, like preach the paramountcy of Scripture, proclaim the return of Christ and his kingdom, etc. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you have anyone in your life who holds you accountable to live in a way that represents Jesus well? If not, I invite you to contact us. And we will show you what you need to do. If you're a believer, keep fighting the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight. Our Lord is coming back one day. And we ought to be ready. 
May God bless you. And may God lead you in all that you do to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.